Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. We put some final touches on our little studio here using some chips, some chip technology you can see here in the background. We hope that enhances the viewing experience. Today, I wanted to address a very large and a very fast growing market for the semiconductor industry, and that is cloud computing. And I wanna do it through a small company called Digital Ocean. Uh, it's a small position in my portfolio, but I think it's an important position. And I wanna explain a little bit about the cloud market, servers, expected growth for this industry, and why I think Digital Ocean is a special business. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Let me start with some basic definitions. So first, what is cloud computing exactly? Well, cloud computing basically is a very powerful computer that's housed in a remote data center. And we access that computer via an internet connection. Businesses in particular utilizing data centers, remote data centers by an increasing amount uh, because the computing hardware there is very powerful. They can host some very powerful applications there and then their users, uh, consumers or employees, whoever uh, can get access to the apps uh, via high-speed internet connection. And then that application doesn't need to be stored on our local PC or tablet or smartphone, which may have some limitations for computing purposes locally. So DigitalOcean is a cloud computing uh, or basically a data center company. So it falls into this bottom right-hand corner of our semiconductor industry flowchart. So like all public cloud providers, DigitalOcean operates data centers around the globe and then offers that hardware, that infrastructure, the computing infrastructure to its users via an internet connection. And those, those users are small and mid-sized businesses that want to develop an app. Sometimes they're even a startup that are just experimenting with an application. So this is a pretty big market. Overall, the cloud industry worth well over $300 billion per year in spending. And, and that number is only going up, specifically the small to mid-sized business part of that market, upwards of about $100 billion per year in spending. And DigitalOcean thinks that market could be as much as half a trillion dollars by the end of this decade. So data centers, a huge user of technology and computing equipment uh, to patch together the cloud that its users can put to work. So how exactly do these virtual machines operate? Well, we put together this little chart here illustrating first on top how a traditional PC works. So you have a PC, you have an operating system like uh, Windows or Apple's operating systems, even our smartphones, uh, Android smartphones, those operating systems tell the hardware itself, tell the PC or, or, or the smartphone how to operate so that the applications that we interact with are actually useful. Now in the business world, uh, servers are these really giant, very powerful computing devices. And oftentimes you don't need a server dedicated to just one application. Maybe you have a single server and you want it to run multiple applications. How does a business make this work? Either for an on-premise server or one in a remote data center, AKA the cloud. Well, you have the operating system that still sits on top of the server, just like our PC. But then you have a special piece of software called uh, a hypervisor that creates multiple virtual machines that all reside within that single server. And then these virtual machines, you can think of them as their own individual computer can each be tasked with operating its own application. 
Now, I point this out because I think it's key to understanding DigitalOcean's business model. Uh, if you jump on the company's website and take a look at their pricing plan, uh, you'll, you'll notice here they call their virtual machines that uh, a user, uh, a small business, a mid-sized business, or maybe even a startup can rent by the month. And they, they call these virtual machines a droplet. So DigitalOcean has these remote data centers full of very powerful servers, and you can rent one of the virtual machines on those servers for a very, very low cost. Uh, you can see here, starting at four bucks a month for a droplet, um, and a lot of these various solutions on here start for free. That's the, beautiful, the beauty of DigitalOcean is they allow SMBs, small mid-sized businesses, to just rent what they need and scale up their usage of DigitalOcean's infrastructure as needed. So a lot of different solutions here, a growing number of solutions here that DigitalOcean offers at a very affordable price, which is a very important differentiator uh, for DigitalOcean versus a lot of the big public cloud and multi-cloud giants out there. Now, many investors may take a look at a small company like DigitalOcean and think, how does this company not get squashed by the very large, very sizable, deep pocketed competition that they have? Uh, Amazon, AWS, the pioneer of cloud computing, Microsoft, Azure, uh, which has been catching up at a very rapid pace, Google Cloud. But you can see here over the last year, in spite of a lot of economic headwinds, uh, foreign currency exchange rate problems brought on by the U.S. Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes and so on. DigitalOcean putting up pretty consistent north of 30% growth rates. Uh, and I think that consistency is an important point, considering uh, some cloud providers like, like AWS uh, and Azure specifically reporting slowdowns as of late. Small DigitalOcean consistently chugging along. And I think that very affordable pricing uh, is, is a key reason why. Uh, a lot of small and mid-sized businesses are able uh, to deploy ideas that they have, test out ideas that they have because of the affordability uh, and, and DigitalOcean is able to continue to extend its reach as a result and fend off some competition. I'm gonna jump over to my ticker terminal here for just a moment and show you again here, you can see how small DigitalOcean is uh, in, in an industry where the top players rake in tens of billions of dollars a year. DigitalOcean just shy of $600 million in revenue last year, but nice consistent growth over the last few years since their IPO. And along with that, nice healthy increases in gross margin and operating profit margins. Uh, this is also significant. Uh, I'm going to jump over here to the cash flow statement. You can see, of course, in fiscal year 2022, DigitalOcean did generate a net loss, although there the second half of 2022, this did flip positive to positive net income, and they will probably be uh, at positive net income in 2023. But for for years now, the company has been generating positive cash from operations and positive free cash flow. Uh, you can see here pretty healthy free cash flow profit margins the last two years, especially in fiscal year 2022. And this free cash flow margin headed to north of 20% ahead of schedule. Uh, they're going to get there uh, to that 20% or greater free cash flow margin in 2023. At least that's the outlook. That's the plan from CEO Yancy Spruill and the top team. So in addition to DigitalOcean steadily growing in an industry that's dominated by some very, very large tech companies, uh, they're profitable. DigitalOcean profitable by every metric that there is. How is DigitalOcean able to do it? Especially given that uh, data center construction and operation is a very expensive business well, here's one of the reasons the company likes to talk about its very efficient operating model and the way it's able to onboard new users 
at very, very low cost. In fact, uh, DigitalOcean has a very, very small sales and marketing team helping keep operating expenses down and thus helping it generate those nice, healthy profit margins. You'll notice here, I've got my screen shared. They have this whole tutorials section, very large, thriving community uh, of developers as well. Their featured articles and some more recent content that developers, software developers can go to, to get help, whether they're a digital ocean user or not. Uh, they have this very extensive library of tutorials, not just for their own cloud, but also for some of their competitors as well. Uh, for example, if you're using uh, AWS and you've got a question on how to use AWS, a developer might do a search for that and land on DigitalOcean's tutorial. Um, DigitalOcean says that they're able to onboard many thousands of new users throughout the year because of this very large web presence they have, very cheap to operate, and it's the primary source of the company's uh, funnel. It, it fills in the top of its funnel with all of these new and potential users, and then a very small percentage of those eventually down the road scale up into uh, larger customers and very profitable customers. Given the company's potential, not just this year, but really over the course of the next decade during this new explosion in semiconductor usage, uh, ongoing continuing growth of the cloud, and especially as a lot of smaller and mid-sized businesses make this full migration to cloud computing, I really like DigitalOcean's chances at continuing to grow profitably. Key phrase there, growing profitably. But I also think shares are a very, very reasonable price. Granted, the company has pulled back on its spending in the last year and is going to really emphasize profits. Uh, like I said, free cash flow, profit margins of over 20% were a longer term goal, more like 2024, 2025. They're moving that up to 2023 as they scale back on their growth initiatives. So revenue growth is not going to remain above 30% in 2023, more than likely. Nevertheless, uh, company is still growing, profit margins expanding. Uh, DigitalOcean stock currently trades for about 21, 20, 22 times expected 2023 gap earnings per share, so not adjusted. And then on a free cash flow basis, the stock trading for about 25, 26 times expected free cash flow in 2023. If you think the cloud is going to remain a double digit growth industry for the foreseeable future, like I do, um, and specifically, if you think small and mid-sized businesses have a, have a lot of room to expand into this next gen IT infrastructure department, I think DigitalOcean is worth a look right now. I think the stock is reasonably priced. Um, like I said, a small portion of my portfolio, only about 1% of my portfolio, but nevertheless, I think it's an important part of my portfolio because I think this company will grow into a larger percentage of my portfolio by the end of the 2020s. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, as you take a look at the cloud, industry through the lens of DigitalOcean, uh, this is a, a top end market for chips, roughly about one third of the end market for chips right now. And I think it will at least remain that way by 2030. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you stay up to date on more semiconductor industry developments and stocks. Also check out uh, the website and the service Jose Naharo and I started up more semiinvesting.com. Link to that here in the video and down below. Hope to see you over there if you want some more extra analysis and deep dives into the semiconductor industry. Take care, everyone. Thank you.